What's up you guys, it's Matt here. So thank you for joining me on another NFA video. I'm sorry if my voice seems a little bit weird. Um, for some reason I'm going through issues again, you know, coughing and stuff. So um, hopefully I get better uh, very, very soon. But I wanted to talk about AMC in this video. I wanted to mention this yesterday and uh, say something about it because it is up a significant amount in the after hours market the pre-market um yes we're seeing a little bit of pullbacks right now but i wanted to talk about that yesterday i just didn't have the time to talk about it so <clears throat> anyways <clears throat> make sure you guys hit the like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell for more videos like this one also make sure you check out some of the links down below it does help out the channel and if you guys want to follow me on twitter follow me on patreon you can definitely follow me there um <clears throat> but like I said, let's take some time to talk about AMC. If you don't know, I'm a big uh, fan of AMC. Love movie theaters. I love, um, you know, spending money at movie theaters. And obviously, I love investing into the stock, right? Um, overall, it being shorted as much as it is, um, it just shouldn't be a reality to where they're trying to kind of bankrupt, you know, AMC or bankrupt any business for that matter. <clears throat> So that's why I really invested into AMC and um, a, a bigger reason is to uh, see massive gains within it. Now, obviously, you see the strength of the retail side um, versus the institutional side or versus the uh, the hedge fund side, smart money side. And uh, <clears throat> we understand that this thing can blow up any day, right? Um, now, if you didn't know there was a stock conversion that was, uh, you know, supposed to go on that uh, basically you had had plans to convert uh, AMC and Ape, right? Um, and now that apparently is the big news that really drove this. And I wanted to show you guys really quick. So AMC, um, you know, on Friday uh, was kind of flat, right? We saw it, um, you know, a little bit of, a, of an increase, right? 1% up, not crazy over the uh, previous close. <clears throat> um, or over the previous close for that. Um, but now that you see uh, the after hours market, you can see what happened. Instantly when the after hours market happened, you had it push all the way up to $8.76. Over, you know, 100% or close to 100%, I would say, um, from where it closed. That is phenomenal to see that it grew that much. And people were telling me, they were like, hey, are you seeing this right now? And honestly, no, I didn't see it when it did happen because I was I was off of my computer. Usually when I get off my computer, like I'm, I'm trying to be off of the computer, um, um, which I do want to start getting on and doing other live streams um, soon, but I don't know exactly when. Um, but anyways, uh, we went up to $8.76. Uh, it started to decrease here from that, that high level all the way down to about $6.40, which is still a significant increase over where it was at $4. Um, now you see this start to um, you know flatten out, start to consolidate. And in the after hours market, in the pre-market, we're seeing it start to come back and kind of level out here. Um, maybe use the 200 EMA as multiple touch points there, right? As a form of support. But that's not the real story, right? The story is why did we see this increase? Well, it was because the stock conversion, as you can see down here, um, the stock conversion uh, plans halted. So social media pretty much lights up in favor, you know, of this happening, right? You see a, a massive rally because of that. And um, that's big, right? But we understand that that's not because of these shorts to why we're seeing this rally. It's because of um retail traders that maybe have um a, a new light right or have new information that makes them feel solid about the position or solid enough to buy more um so basically that's what we're seeing i just wanted to give you guys a quick update now my uh, opinion on this is yes it's it's very bullish momentum obviously you could see it's up uh 48 as of now uh just to understand that a lot of times the the after hours market the pre-market tends to overreact and when they decide to overreact that means that you're going to see it come back to earth not because of retail traders that are selling because of the shorts that are happening right this overreaction um is going to uh, prompt a large reaction from hedge funds from um, from firms that are shorting the hell out of this because they want to continue to do so. So um, we could see this massively push up. We could see them give up, but 
I'm more thinking that we're going to see the opposite <clears throat> and see a, a decent size pullback. Now, there could be a situation where we see a pre-market pivot. And if this is something that continues this way, so it continues this downward trend to probably trend all the way down to maybe the 200 EMA and become uh, flat or break the 200 EMA, then it could create more bullish momentum within the, the day, seeing how much has happened in the after hours market. So um, look out for that and look out for that pattern, but that could be uh, the case. Um, but my first, my initial thought was that we're gonna see this all probably diminish by the time we see open at 9.30. So I hope that's not the case because I wanna see continued success and I don't wanna sit here and talk down the position at all. Um, but there's there's always that chance that we can see, you know, hedge funds decide to short the hell out of it because it's gaining too much. They feel like they're losing too much. They feel like um, they may be getting, you know, margin called in some, in some places, some instances. So. If we're going to see that, we know that it may be, uh, you know, more of a, a confusing road, right? If that makes sense. And so overall, let's actually look at the chart from a longer term uh, perspective. Let's look at over months. Now, we're still looking for this to reach the 200 EMA within um, these next couple of months to get up to uh, $11.37, break that 200 EMA, and hopefully use the 200 EMA as a form of support. Now, we haven't seen that much in history where it uses that 200 EMA as a form of support, more of a form of resistance. So I would like to go back uh, by the day just to kind of break that down. So you see that history, right? You see that history if we, if we uh, kind of make this a little bit bigger. Um, you see the history of it using the 200 EMA as more of a form of resistance rather than a form of support. Look at how many touch points you have. Yes, some well above the 200 EMA, but definitely seeing more boom, 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 boom. All these touch points that are kind of trending downward and we're looking for that change up to where it's looking more like this, where um, it's coming down to the 200 EMA, coming down to the 200 EMA. That's what I'm looking for, is that strength, um, the buying strength rather than the selling strength. So anyways, um, that's what we have for you guys today. I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update before I start my live stream over on my uh, main channel. So if you guys want to join me over there and, you know, talk shop, I guess, uh, we can find a way to talk about you know, uh, not only cryptocurrency, but also stocks. And we'll see if we can do another live stream later today on this channel um, when the markets do open. But anyways, guys, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.